Hello everyone! In linear dynamics, we are often interested in determining the system's response in the frequency domain or sometimes even in the time domain. The mode superposition method provides us with a very computationally efficient method to do either. In fact, for some types of linear dynamics analysis, we must use the mode superposition method. Understanding this procedure is important in obtaining correct results. Some examples of mode superposition linear dynamics analysis include harmonic analysis to predict response of the linear structure to loads that are very sinusoidally with time, response spectrum analysis to predict the behavior of the structure during the earthquakes, random vibration analysis to predict the behavior of the components in an airplane during flight, transient analysis that involves loads that are a function of time. In this video, we will explain the mode superposition technique and show you how to create a workflow on the project page for mode superposition-based analysis. Ready? Let's get started. Mode superposition is a method of using the natural frequencies and mode shapes from the model analysis to characterize the dynamic response of the structure to transient, harmonic, response spectrum, and random excitations. In the mode superposition method, a linear combination of mode shapes is used to determine the displacement vector of the structure. Using this technique, the solver calculates the response of a structure over a range of frequencies. Let us now see on a simple example how the mode superposition method works. From the model analysis, where only a fixed support is used at the bottom of the structure, mode shapes 1 and 2 are extracted. The sum of the mode shape 1 and mode shape 2 with their respective modal coordinates approximates the final response, which is displacement vector. Mode superposition eigenvectors are known as generalized coordinates, and in this case, coefficients y1 and y2 are the degrees of freedom solved for. The overall response is dependent on the number of modes extracted from the model analysis. It is important to include enough modes over the range of frequencies, so we do not miss any prominent modes that can affect the overall response of a system and the accuracy of the solution. Let's see how we can calculate modal coordinates yi. In the equation of motion, m is a mass matrix, c is the damping matrix, k is the stiffness matrix, U is the displacement vector that we are solving for, and F is the load vector. Please note that damping effect is covered in more detail in another lesson. Solving this equation is computationally expensive since it involves complex matrix algebra. The original system of equations can be reduced if displacement vector is expressed in terms of modal coordinates y, i where fi is the eth mode shape and n being the number of modes used. Substituting the displacement vector into the equation of motion and multiplying with the mode shape, the equation of motion can be expressed in terms of modal coordinates and mode shapes. This equation can be simplified further. Since j represents any mode, the equation represents n uncoupled equations with the n unknowns yi. The advantage of the uncoupled system is that all the computationally expensive matrix algebra is done in the eigen solver, which makes the solution of mode superposition analysis faster and more efficient. The modal coordinates yi are converted back into geometric displacement u using the displacement vector equation. The individual modal responses yi with their respective mode shapes are superimposed to obtain actual response and hence the name mode superposition. 
Let's see how to create the workflow for the mode superposition analysis on the Workbench project page. We can define model analysis as upstream system and mode superposition analysis such as harmonic response, response spectrum, random vibration and transient analysis such as downstream system. If we want to solve harmonic response analysis using mode superposition method, First, insert model analysis on the project page and drag and drop harmonic response analysis over engineering data, geometry, model, and solution of the model analysis. The solution of the model analysis is transferred as the input to harmonic response analysis. For mode superposition analysis, each downstream analysis must use one model analysis. However, one model analysis can be used in multiple downstream analysis. Using mode superposition method to solve linear dynamic problems can save a lot of time. Usually, mode superposition analysis are computationally inexpensive compared to model analysis. Moreover, the results of one model analysis can be reused in downstream analysis. For example, we can perform two or more harmonic response analysis looking at the effect of several types of loading by reusing the results of one modal analysis. If we open mode superposition harmonic model in ANSYS Mechanical, modal and harmonic analysis are both in the outline tree. Notice under analysis settings, the solution method is set by default as mode superposition based on the workflow on the project page. By sharing and transferring data from model analysis to harmonic response analysis, multiple harmonic analysis with different loading conditions could effectively reuse the eigenvectors. Similarly, we can create mode superposition workflow for response spectrum, random vibration, and transient analysis. Recall that one model analysis system can be connected to multiple mode superposition systems. In addition, all mode superposition systems support pre-stress model analysis. A similar workflow is used for pre-stress model analysis, where the engineering data, geometry, and model of structural analysis is shared with model analysis system, while the solution from structural system is transferred into model analysis as an input. Let's now see how to set up mode superposition workflow on a simple walkthrough example. In this example, we will see how to create mode superposition harmonic analysis workflow on the project page with the help of a simple plate geometry. It is made of structural steel and both ends of the plate are fixed. An alternating force of 250 newtons is applied at the center line which represents an unbalanced motor on a floor, and this model is solved by using the mode superposition method. Let's get started. Open WBPZ MSUP underscore harmonic project file that has a predefined model analysis, which we will use as a prerequisite for mode superposition harmonic response analysis. Double click on model cell to open ANSYS Mechanical. The material assignment for the geometry is structural steel, and we will use default mesh for the analysis. Under analysis settings, the maximum mode to find is 6. It is important to extract enough mode to cover the frequency range to get accurate frequency response in the downstream system, but for our example, 6 modes will be enough. Under the Analysis Data Management, change Future Analysis to MSUP Analysis, since we are going to use the model results in a subsequent harmonic analysis. This property enables us to save specific solution files from the model analysis to use in the other analysis. Please note that this can also be done automatically by linking other analysis with model in the project page before solving them. Now let us apply the fixed support boundary condition for the ends of the plate. Right click on the model, insert fixed support, select two ends of the plate and click apply. 
solve the model analysis. Six modes are extracted, where the frequency is ranging from approximately 14 Hz to 135 Hz. In this example, we will consider the excitation frequencies ranging from 0 to 50 Hz. Hence, our focus will be on the first two modes. Select all the columns in the tabular data, right-click and create mode shape results. Right-click on the solution and evaluate all results. We will use these results as a prerequisite for mode superposition harmonic analysis. The first total deformation result shows the mode shape for the frequency of approximately 14 Hz, but the second total deformation result shows the mode shape for the frequency of approximately 50 Hz. Going back to the Workbench project page, drag and drop harmonic analysis system from the toolbox over engineering data, geometry, model, and solution of the model cell. This allows the two analysis system to share resources such as engineering data, geometry, and boundary condition type definitions made in the model analysis. Multiple harmonic response system can be linked to the model analysis system and used to investigate harmonic response of the system under different loading scenarios. The solution of the model analysis is transferred as the input to harmonic response analysis with a link between solution of model and the setup of harmonic analysis. Hence, make the mode superposition approach computationally more efficient. Double click on the model of the model's analysis system and open mechanical. Under analysis settings of harmonic analysis, set the frequency range from 0 to 50 Hz within which we will look for the frequency response. This comes under the assumption that the motor is ramping up from 0 to 2500 RPM, which when converted to Hertz, lies well under 50 Hertz. In this example, we will be using damping for demonstration purposes. Hence, under damping controls, define the damping ratio of 2% or 0.02. Notice that the solution method is set to mode superposition by default based on the workflow on the project page. To add the force load, right-click on harmonic response, insert force, scope it to the midline of the geometry, change defined by two components, input 250 newtons in y direction. As mentioned earlier, the load represents the imbalance force of a rotating motor, and for this, simplified example, we assume that it is a constant and not a function of motor RPM. Solve harmonic analysis, right-click on solution, insert frequency response deformation. Scope the two faces of the geometry and change the orientation to y-axis. Right-click on the solution and evaluate all results. We can observe a peak in the graph representing the resonance behavior occurring at the first mode of natural frequency of approximately 14 Hz with a maximum amplitude of approximately 2.5 mm. Similar mode superposition workflows can be created for other analyses such as random vibration, response spectrum, and transient analysis. With this, the walkthrough example is completed. Let's summarize. In linear dynamics analysis, frequency or time domain, we can use the mode superposition method. The mode superposition method is so efficient that it's often computationally cheaper than the model analysis portion of the solution. Thus, we perform the model analysis once, computationally expensive part, and we can rerun multiple downstream mode superposition analysis very quickly. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching, and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.